Welcome everyone to another episode of the Shaman's Way podcast. As always, this episode comes from the teachings of our amazing friend and shaman in residence, Cricket. We hope you're enjoying these podcasts as much as we enjoy making them, and I'd like to take just a moment to ask you if you would please leave us a rating and a comment in iTunes or whichever podcast player you're listening to us from. Giving us a rating and sharing this podcast with others is the biggest way you can tell us that you like our show. Now, without further ado, on with the episode. Hello and welcome back, my constant listener. It is lovely to be with you again in sacred time and sacred space. Today I wanted to tackle the very fascinating and perhaps slightly misunderstood shamanic ceremony or spiritual initiation called dismemberment. Shamanic dismemberment. Give me everything mangled and bruised, and I will make a light of it to make you weep, and we will have rain and begin again. Dina Metzger, The Poem Leavings. I personally don't recall when or how I learnt the terms to dissociate or dissociation. I believe it may have come from reading The Three Faces of Eve in the 1970s, followed by the Trudy Chase story, When Rabbit Howls, and a couple of other stories. I was very intrigued with multiple personality disorder, now known as Dissociative Identity Disorder. By exploring other personal histories, I began to examine my own personal history. In my shamanic years, I have seen many different aspects of dissociation, everything from mild coping mechanisms to being completely shut out of any of the basic of the four bodies, the physical, the mental, the spiritual, It is not uncommon during soul retrieval work to often hear, I feel outside of myself. This is what people will report. Or, I don't feel inside my body is another aspect of it. And for myself, when I journey for the soul retrieval, it is not uncommon for me to encounter a full-grown, same old soul piece standing directly or sometimes even halfway in their physical counterpart on my healing table. Through the process of my own journeys as well as having the opportunity to listen to journeys of many others, the experience of dismemberment occurs. As I wandered through the territory of dismemberment, I could feel how my ancestors, through myth, folk tales, and stories, related to the struggle to be conscious in this world after experiencing radical shifts in perception. Now, dismemberment can be an incredibly exhilarating experience, or it can be an utterly terrifying experience. And some people have been reported to be engrossed out by the very thought of the experience and said no. It is dramatic. We could even call it a drama, a symbolic transformational drama. I tell the story of the Sumerian sky goddess Inanna in two other podcasts, The Descent of Inanna and The Ascent of Inanna. In the descent, Anana passed through seven gates to the underworld. Each time she was stripped of deeper parts of her being until she was naked and lifeless, lifeless, her heart not beating. She was rescued by the wisdom of Ananke, the god of wisdom and water, which is our emotions. So perhaps we can find or we can presume that wisdom is born through the dismemberment drama. To sacrifice our hearts, such as Inanna did when she reached the bottom layer and sat in front of her sister Ishkagil and 
Urshkegil hung her for three days on a hook, and she died. She sacrificed her heart. But sacrificing our heart doesn't mean that we're giving an aspect of ourselves away. Rather, it keeps us true. We free our hearts from distraction. All the while, spirit is putting us back together. Realignment. We're now stepping out of chaos into creation from unconscious to the conscious. And just as Inanna was propelled to enter the underworld as a sacrifice, we too sacrifice true self and come out of disassociation from our soul when our heart is broken, bleeding, or sacrificed. From my deepest heart, I share my belief in the absolute sacredness of dismembered. I was taught it was one of the rarest gifts from your spirit kin, and so therefore it was. There is something enigmatic and an abundance of potential is released after being broken apart. I encourage you to seek myths from other places and find the stories of dismemberment for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. If it interests you, satisfy your own curiosity. I know there are tales of dismemberment, even if we think of Skeleton Woman, one of the Inuit stories, and one of the creation goddesses. She was dismembered by having her fingers cut off. In the pre-Aztec traditions, the prima materia, the prima goddess, she is broken apart. She is dismembered and then brought back together again. So we can see this in other myths. Waking up for lack of a better term, from dissociation, each time has reminded me that harmony and destruction are in the same breath. Now, truly, to be honest, how some people get to walk away from their dismemberments and their journeys is beyond me. For to me, spirit knows no half measures or lukewarm adjustments. Dismemberment has always been a very intense experience. And I ask you, how can you feel the other side if the journey has not been an intense one? The intensity is the catharsis to a very deep and personal transformation. At its deepest level, the dismemberment experience dismantles our old identity. It is a powerful death and rebirth process. The experience of being stripped to bone forces us to examine the bare essence of what we are. The divestment of everything superfluous is a fierce teaching. We learn what is truly important and what is non-essential to our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual survival. Loss impresses upon us the temporal nature of life, especially if we are ill. We are forced to let go of things very precious to us. One of my favorite anthropologists and writer of one of my much, uh, writer of my much beloved copy of When the Spirits Ride the Wind, I think she was a lovely mystic as well as an anthropologist, Dr. Felicitas Goodman. She writes about Siberian shamans and their high regard for dismemberment. It was seen as an essential phase of initiation. Through her work with trance postures, and the book I referred to before, and, and we have done a book review on the on Shaman's Way, Ecstatic Body Postures. Through her work with trans postures, not only herself, but also her students had spontaneous dismemberment visions or journeys or experiences. Spirits aid us in acknowledging, becoming awake and aware of the psychological fragmentation many of us know already exists within each of us. Each time my own spirit is dismembered, and it has only happened four times in all the years I've been doing this, there is a transformation of consciousness, and each experience has led me to a deeper connection between the dispossessed, disjointed, separated parts of my psyche and allowing me to sense the potential of moving towards greater, maybe even harmonious and integration of my own self. In the core of our being, we are singular and unified, 
at the surface of our interactions with the world, we are multiple and dispersed. In transformation, we seek to recover that original unity. That quote comes from the book The Unfolding Self by Ralph Metzner. Dismemberment sheds layers of our self, reintegrating essential aspects of our soul. We then are in a place to continue, perhaps gaining even a deeper level of remembering who we actually are. When one of my experiences, during one of my experiences of dismemberment, I was completely skinned. Every single piece of me was gone, and all that was left was me, the hollow bone, my skeleton. I was put into a huge cooking pot, slowly simmering. Ever so often, spirit would stir my bones even deeper into the soup. I interpreted this cooking pot as my primordial self. When I was sufficiently cooked, I was taken out of the water and surrounded by beautiful women of different shapes, colors, and languages. And as they wove and created my beautiful body, they did so from the most colorful and beautiful fabric. Each piece of me was vibrant. I felt swaddled or cocooned and certainly well taken care of. This aspect of my dismemberment drama is akin to a resurrection, a higher state of spiritual awareness and, and awakeness. The slow process of simmering my body in the dark liquid of the pot felt endless, and my spirit's thoughts were impenetrable to me. Upon reflection, I know this drama was simply part of my proverbial tunnel, at the end of which I was woven new skin, beautiful, bright, and deeply seeped and steeped in my primordial self. The question then I will ask, as I always do, what now? How do we keep the God shot going? All of this wisdom evaporates pretty fast, especially when one is still suffering or encountering new stressors. I continually remind myself to keep the faith, Myself, personally, I am in a very challenging chapter in my life. However, even in the darkest of my times, I will find spirit breaking through, sharing wisdom, and helping me to lighten my load, even if only for a bit. I believe many of you, my constant listeners, have been through your own dark times, your own dark night of the soul. Perhaps you too can feel yourself emptying, knowing something new will fill your cup. A dying to self is not always an easy process. When we go back into the different experiences of dismemberment, one of the continuous experiences shared with me is being eaten by spirit and being shat out by spirit at the end. And I think that is what some people really found disgusting or thought that they would not be able to live through and therefore were said no to their spirits. I was trained many, many years ago never to say no to a gift because spirit in that regard may not offer me another gift or may not offer me another way to do something that's very valuable and invaluable to my soul. But I'm not like everyone else and everyone else is certainly not like me. That's, that is definitely a reality. And I trust that you're listening because you may have had a dismemberment or maybe you have heard about dismemberment and are not quite certain what it is and maybe I perked your curiosity. Since the experiences of dismemberment and being rebuilt, one time I had, I was stripped again down to the bone and then from the bone I remember being crushed and my consciousness stood outside of the physical aspect of myself, so my bones, my skin, my hair, and so on and so forth. And the bone collector I met 
uh, I met a spirit named the Bone Collector, and then years later actually found stories about a spirit or a tale about a being who is a bone collector. And the bone collector is in the spirit world, and when an animal dies, the bone collector comes out of the spirit world, gathers the bones and the skin of the animal, brings it back down, and breaks apart the body and takes the bones and over time the bone collector will create new creatures so if the wolf population is getting low or the 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 hunters couldn't find something to eat they would go to the bone collector or they would make offerings to the bone collector and the bone collector most often a she would collect bones put them together in the form of an animal and blow life into them and release them as i was crushed by the bone collector and my bones were absolute powder from there a type of I don't know what type of water the bone collector used. And between water and fingers, fashioned my own bones and fashioned my brand new skeletal structure. And from there, my spirit kin made my body, fleshed me out, made me come alive. My dear, actually, for her contribution to the enlivenment or the re-enlivening of self used grass. And there was a couple of journeys later or something along those lines. I know that it was a short amount of time had passed. And in the spirit world, my body was still integrating the changes and deer was hungry and decided that nibbling on some grass that had grown on my side would be a really good way of getting something to eat and some nutrients which is really quite hilarious when you think about it and it also in the spirit world it tickled I think that was one of the very few times in the spirit world where I've actually felt a tickle or felt something that the spirit world spirits have been doing that was light pleasant and playful through these processes I personally am much better at not disassociating I have personally learned how to become present and practice alert awareness and presence in awareness. And as I'd indicated or said earlier, I have not experienced a dismemberment drama for some time. I believe that the God shots were what woke me to my own responsibility to self. I can feel, however, a longing for my soul for a death ceremony, a dying to this particular chapter of my life. I do not know if the spirits will gift me with a dismemberment, but I will be supported to heal my weary psyche and give me space to weep. And weeping is the rainy weather of the soul that frees our mind and body of all the pain we have endured so that our spirit can arrive at a sense of a job well done. I am not quite ready to seek this dismemberment in whatever form it appears, because there is much still to change in my world, and there are still obstacles to that change. However, I am reminded of the beautiful sunsets, knowing that as a pattern goes down, it grows most vividly. I would like to read another quote from The Spirit of Shamanism by Roger Walsh. The dismemberment experience is similar to that of the Tibetan tantric practice of Kchod. Here, practitioners cultivate detachment and compassion by visualizing their bodies being dismembered and offered to wrathful deities and hungry demons. The major difference seems to be that, whereas for the tantric, these experiences are recognized as voluntary visualizations, for the shaman, they are experienced as involuntary trials. He goes on to say, The experience of death and rebirth, dismemberment and reconstitution, appears to be a psychological and or spiritual transformative process most likely to occur at times of overwhelming emotional arousal and stress. This arousal activates psychological tensions and conflicts to unsustainable levels. 
The result is a crisis in which old patterning forces are no longer able to maintain the former psychological balance. The old psychodynamic forces, conflicts, habits, conditioning, organization, beliefs, and identity are overwhelmed and the psyche's organization temporarily collapses. End quote. Another author I read quite a few years ago, Z. Budapest, described it as Turmoil is a fertile soul necessary for the soul to find eternal wisdom, insights, and eventual peace of mind. Of course, we all know there are no guarantees. As we travel on this shamanic path, I cannot stress enough to work it. Work it, baby! Work it! Crisis such as the soul standing beside its own body can resolve in different ways. For some individuals not necessarily seeking a spiritual healing for a disassociated psyche, the ordeal may end and slowly they put themselves back together again and the life goes on and say in the same overtly or vaguely unsatisfactory way that it did before. For myself, each time I have come out transformed with room in my soul for new strength, new visions, new wisdom. But external crises and their emotional counterparts often just serve to reestablish behavior patterns such as disassociation or however rifts in your psyche appear to you. In my healing room, this is one of the ways that I ask the spirits to help me to work with the behavior patterns. I pray to south and I ask the fire to burn through the body, taking with it old beliefs and opinions, roots and things which no longer serve. And then I follow by asking water to clear away the debris of the fire so new soul can emerge and new stalks can grow. Next, I ask water to nourish the roots, to make ready the uncovered soil of the soul in preparation for new growth. I want myself and others to come away with new ways of thinking, perceiving, relating, responding, and being taken shape from the very core. We emerge polished from the tumbler of our ordeals. Dismemberment isn't an easy lightning flash switch. That's why awakening is called a journey. It takes time to reach the destination. And there's always challenging times ahead. As we walk through this particular world and these journeys or even contemplations with respect to shamanism, I think that we are setting the stage for our soul to grow. By indulging our spirit's desire to grow, we become better at understanding this process. And hopefully, after each turn around the medicine wheel, these experiences can help us navigate our way with deeper awareness and much more awake. The idea that we can recover pieces of our soul and make better the wounded psyche is in no way new. When I read some of the psychological terms for dis disassociation, I was taken back to the real world in a sense because the term disassociation and disassociative disorders has many different faces and has many different degrees. There is dissociation straight from psychosis, where there is absolutely no connection to reality or to what could be the real world. I wanted to bring dissociation and how to treat dissociation or how to work with dissociation by a spiritual gift called dismemberment to you 
for the very simple reason that I have found so many shades of disassociation, so many shades of a wounded psyche that to follow strictly the psychological and DSMV4, DSMV5 terms to use for disassociation seemed devoid of spirit. And I want to be in spirit. I want us to recognize spirit. And it is by understanding the gentler aspects of disassociation, the gentler aspects of dismemberment, Each time we move from the place of where we were through a process of change by being shook up through chaos, whatever it is, the hope is that when we come back together, we come back together as a far more or even just slightly more aware individual. I really understand and wish to impart upon you my faith in the spirits to help us understand some of the psychological dramas that we go through. Dismemberment is simply one of the gifts that our spirit can do for us in order to help us die to those aspects of ourself, to help us to walk with who we are and move with who we are, accept who we are, and to play with who we are. And I don't mean play as in the magical child archetype. I mean play as into moving through the psyche, holding the psyche, uh, feeling that psyche, play with it in regard to if I have this stressor, how does my psyche respond? If I have this stressor, how does my psyche respond? So maybe not necessarily wishing to engage in behaviors that are detrimental to yourself for funsies, but perhaps recognizing when you are triggered and you're disengaging from self, how you respond to that. That's very important. And how do you respond if you've received a dismemberment? And I, I'm i not certain that dismemberment in basic drumming circles or in shamanic classes is really talked about. I think it is very misunderstood. I Well, maybe not misunderstood as much as really not understood. How about that? That might be just a better way of putting it not understood. The mind and the psyche, the soul are very simple and excessively complicated aspects of self. Shamanism gives us many different tools to explore the psyche. Buddhist Tratang Tulka understood the art of embracing the vicissitudes of life as just part of the ongoing parade. Writing, he said, learning to flow with our experiences gives us true stability and freedom. When we discover the change as the real nature of our existence, our old conception of the world seems dwarfed and limited. Our world comes alive. We are whole again. A new reality emerges from the old, like a phoenix out of fire. Ted Andrews correlates the kundalini process with what he calls the 13th path of the Kabbalistic tradition. In the tarot, he goes so far as to relate it to the archetype of the high priestess. It is a bittersweet path, he warns, and one that represents us with a tremendous test of faith. On this path, which is also called gateway to knowledge, after being devastated by all non-essentials and over- overcoming our kar- karmic obstacles, we are able to discover our deepest truths. This is the path of the final dark night of the soul journey, says Andrews. It is here that we have the opportunity to awaken our strongest intuition and impregnate ourselves with the light and love of the divine. What a lovely concept. A lovely way to put it. 
It is here that we have the opportunity to awaken to our strongest intuition and to impregnate ourselves with the light and love of the divine. I don't often speak about the love and the light of the divine. It really isn't part of my language. It doesn't, I'm not saying that I don't believe that love is the end all or love is the, love is the ultimate goal. I'm, what I really want to explore is I want to explore where I am now in this mucky mess we call the world. And I know that we are all from the divine spark of light and that we all have divine spikes of light within us. But I also know from doing depossession work that there are many different lights to the soul. Some lights are purple, some lights are blue, some lights are bright white. Lights change. And we are not all the same. And how we walk a bittersweet path is not the same between you and the same between I. These are differences. What is your gateway to knowledge? My gateway to knowledge is the medicine wheel. So where does dismemberment come on the medicine wheel? It actually can come in any place on the medicine wheel because we're dealing with the four basic or four common states of the human soul. So we're dealing with the intellectual, the physical, the spiritual, and the mental. And in all of those aspects, we have disassociation to the point where I don't feel like I'm inside my body. I've heard oftentimes when I use my pendulum to figure out where the chakras are, how the body is relating from one part to another part. What I've encountered quite often, especially from people who tend to live in their head and have not really a good relationship, if any relationship with their body, that the pendulum will, from because I, I go from the bottom of the feet to the knees, and then I start at the root chakra. So I want to find out how grounded we are, how grounded we are not. And when I find a dead stop in the pendulum from the feet to the knees to the pelvis, the root chakra, and oftentimes the dead stop will continue in the root chakra or in the, in the sacral chakra, and then we come up into the power center and the third chakra. Sometimes all of those are dead stopped. Sometimes the, the third chakra, the power center, can begin to move in a different fashion so when we know we have energy and then I take the pendulum to the heart and I try to see if there's a similarity or a difference between how the pendulum is swinging between the power center and the heart that gives me a really good indication as to how the body relates to the heart or if the body even relates to the heart because it is from my interpretation it is the 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 power center the third chakra that is the, uh, maybe the interpreter, maybe the shaman of the body, I don't know, the interpreter between what comes in the body and how it is processed within the body. So there is that aspect of it as well. And it gives me a very good insight into how we don't live in our body, especially in the times we live in now. I think it is far easier to not be present than it is to be present. I think it can be much easier to shut off our eyes to the violence of the world, to the suffering of the world, to the environmental degradation, etc., etc., etc. And through the relationship with spirit, I come to more of a place of peace, compassion, understanding, which doesn't mean that I don't have a will to uh, be an advocate or a warrior for a cause or a warrior for something that I believe in. But I don't know that I would have or could have been an advocate or a warrior if I had not been less disassociated from my own self, less fractured in my own psyche. And as I move towards growing in harmony with my own self, then I have more energy, more insight, and more compassion into the world that I live in. 
And as I move through this chapter in my life, which is challenging, I know that I'm going to come out the other side. Some way, somehow, not all changes are great. Not all changes make you feel like, woo, that was a gift. And sometimes, to be honest, you know, there is that saying, everything happens for a reason. I I don't actually believe that at all, To maybe to a certain extent. But I think that sometimes shit just happens. And I'm not certain that we can always determine why. An example that I often use is I was uh, 18 years old and I was riding a pedal bike and I had a cotton bag or, you know, those bags that now you use for grocery shopping on my handlebar with books in it. And I turned around to shoulder check to make sure there was no traffic coming behind me. And as a result of that, my book bag slid in between my wheel and the metal that holds the wheel on, creating an absolute dead stop. And the concrete rushed up to meet my face or my face (laughs) rushed down to meet the concrete I don't uh, however you want to put it the reason I'm telling you this story is that I fractured my elbow and to this day sometime to this day it will lock so I will be putting it's my right arm so I'll be putting down a plate or putting down a cup and all of a sudden my elbow will lock and I'm not I and I can't actually move my arm until I twist my forearm slightly and hear a crack so tell me what the purpose is for that because I've never found out the purpose and if you know the purpose for that or if you wish to discuss the purpose of that with me I'm always open for discussion just a discussion and I'm always open for having my mind uh, awaken and opened and uh, absolutely taken over by another person's perspective Thank you for sharing your time with me and thank you for taking the time to contemplate your relationship to self and your relationship to your own psyche. How do you heal your psyche? How do you work with your psyche? If you come across a dismemberment, did you know what it was? If you haven't come across a dismemberment, can you now seek it or can you now seek how that situation may arise? Until next time, my lovely and amazing constant listeners, I wish you a most blessed May, a funky May, and I will see you again or speak to you again very shortly. And uh, yeah, keep the faith. I hope you have a great rest of your day or evening or morning or whenever you're listening. And I look forward to meeting you around the microphone again. Bye. Thank you again for joining us here on the Shaman's Way podcast. If you have any questions, would like to make a request for a future episode, or if you're looking for other shamanic resources, including free drumming tracks, please visit us at shamansway.net. Until the next episode, be well, everyone.